And now it's time for That Gets My Goat! Was that okay, Bob? Okay, everybody, welcome back. We're uh, talking Avengers. I'm Big Anglovich. And I'm Rish Outfield, and I'm going to let you take the ball and go wherever you want with it. Okay. Because I've been monopolizing it. I have a plan to see whether we can shoot that ball into the hoop or if it's just going to bounce off the rim, and we'll find out. Uh, (laughs) Bong. Oh, dang. Now we know. Okay, so when we went to see the show, I was meeting you at the theater. I got there a little bit ahead of you. And there's these, like, rocks. They're kind of like landscaping rocks, except for they're just in the middle of the concrete. So they're not really landscaping rocks. They're large rocks you can just sit on. And is that what they're for, is just to sit on? I think so. I'm assuming that's what they're for. I was sitting on these rocks while I was waiting for you to show up. You were like a minute or two behind me. And as I sat there, like, people were coming in and out of the theater, and I could hear people talking. I actually heard a little bit about what was going to happen in the movie before it happened. Of course, I didn't know this until I saw the movie, and then, I, oh, that was what they were talking about. Nice. But I sat there, and I was waiting for you, and I, I saw this sight that just really stuck with me for some reason as being something really cool. There was a group of four kids. They were these pudgy little, I would say maybe eight-year-olds, and they came running in in like a line one after the other after the other jump up onto the rock jump back down off of the rock and then ran into the theater the first one comes running he's got a big thor hammer in his hand and thor helmet Helmet. mask it wasn't really a full helmet it was one of those things like just the front of the helmet and then it was strapped on with the thing you know like wolverine mask you've seen where it's just the front of his face but thor actually has a helmet this kid had a front of a helmet it was like a crown kind of. right so he comes running he jumps up onto the rock with his hammer jumps down right behind him comes another kid with a big bow in his hand jumps up onto the rock jumps down right behind him comes a kid with a green face hulk mask strapped onto his face and two giant fist hands And he jumps up onto the rock and jumps down. And right behind him comes a kid with a Captain America mask and the little shield in his hand. Jumps up onto the rock and jumps down. And I just thought, wow. And I wonder, you know, we've talked about this kind of stuff before. Like Harry Potter, you know, you go to the midnight screening and you got all these people wearing Harry Potter costumes to go and see Harry Potter. And... We always refer back to 1977 when Star Wars came out and people got so crazy for this film and it was just this worldwide event. And I was wondering about the just the event of Avengers. Is Avengers an event? Did these kids mean something, these four kids that I saw? Because it wasn't the only thing that we saw. I mean, we went by the Walmart that uh, was nearby just to get some stuff because our show didn't actually start for an hour after we met. So we went and got something to eat and we went by the Walmart. In the Walmart, there's three or four kids walking by wearing Avengers t-shirts that looked like they'd gotten them the day before, the day, that day, something like that. And they saw me, you and I, who were wearing Captain America t-shirts and they said, hey, nice shirt. Probably, what would you say, 20% of the people in the audience were wearing some sort of Marvel Avengers type There were people wearing Captain America shirts. There were people wearing Hulk shirts. I saw a picture on Facebook of, uh, I can't remember who the author was, but an author that I uh, friended on Facebook, and he sent out a picture of himself. And he's like, yes, I am wearing my Hulk t-shirt to the movies. Is it that kind of an event? Is it a Star Wars-like thing or a Harry Potter-like thing? Or what do you think? Well, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, the whole marketing thing, the whole merchandising thing and it's been going on for a long long time but you being a sports guy you've seen that your whole life if you go to the stadium what a third will be in a jersey or will have the colors what how many would you what percentage would you say it depends on how lame the fans are or not but usually at the very least they'll be wearing a t-shirt or something that's the color of and it you know if you're going to an la game then five four three percent maybe but if you go to a place where they have real people and real fans then it'll be 50 percent or more usually you know i go to the soccer games fairly often around here and you've got probably 75 percent or higher of the people wearing a jersey or at least a t-shirt or something like that that goes along and you got a lot of really crazy ones that are face painted flag toting drum bringing you know and they all speak spanish 
<laughs> yeah, and and that it's just a way of showing your support, of showing that you're a fan of the team, and it's fun. It is, and I think that we've started to see this with movies more and more. And it, it, it was always in my childhood, Star Trek was the only thing, right? The only non-sports dress costume thing. dress up thing, and people and were people ridiculed mocked for the it. hell out of it. But we've just seen within our adult lifetimes. Yeah. So it wasn't just Star Trek. It became Star Wars and it became the little girls would start to dress as the Disney princesses and go to Disneyland in the dress and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I don't think that existed when we were kids. And again, it's kind of a crass marketing thing, but it's fun. Yeah. And it's become more and more acceptable to the point where I smile big when I see that kind of thing. Yeah. The- um, even if, you know, somebody's running around like Spike Wit- Wiki or whatever, <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, that's cool that a kid loves it that much that, or that their parents love the kid that much. I, I don't know how it works because I don't have kids. You do. I don't love dressed, my kids. But I know you've dressed your boy up <laughs> in a Jedi outfit one time. Yeah, he wanted to be a Jedi for Halloween. So we went out and bought the pattern and my wife slavishly labored away at it, sadly. And then, then we wore it for one night. And oh, it was just was, for Halloween. It wasn't it for was when for the Halloween. movie came out. You didn't wear it again? It was the year that the movie came out, but it was not ready in time. The movie came out that summer, and it wasn't ready until that Halloween. So he really didn't get to wear it a lot, but we have saved all those, I mean, all the costumes that we do. And he was, in another year, he was Darth Vader. And we've saved all those costumes, and sometimes I get them out and put them on and play in them and stuff like that. I remember he had a Superman costume from when Superman Returns came out. Right. And granted, there's no way he can fit in it now. (laughs) But if he could, you would expect him to wear that to Man of Steel next year. Right? I mean, if he wanted to. So, yeah, if he wanted to. He's 12 years old now, so he might be... So all that stuff is lame now? I don't know. He might be less inclined to wear a costume out to a movie. It might be more like he wants to wear the t-shirt to the movie like you and I do. That's fine. But you never know. I mean, I saw when X-Men 3 came out, there was a group of teenagers that showed up and they were wearing, you know, one guy was dressed as Wolverine, one guy was dressed as Iceman, another guy was dressed as uh, Cyclops, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. And this was a group of teenagers. You know, their costumes weren't elaborate. They weren't like some of the Harry Potter folks that I see. And holy crap, they must have paid like $400 for their costumes, some of these people. But it's become so much more acceptable. Yeah. And maybe there are still assholes that would mock. Oh, well, there are. But there's always assholes that would mock. Yes. The only reason they don't mock the sports guys is because sports fans are big guys a lot of times. <laughs> That's probably You know it. what I mean? These are guys that would would give as hard as they get. Uh-huh. That it's become acceptable and fun and, and that people are just like, if you care about this thing, if you're a big fan of this thing, yeah, support it. That's great. Uh, I didn't go to the Muppets, but I'm sure that there were people with Muppet shirts and stuff when that came out. And I, in 1995, when GoldenEye came out, I was dating this girl and I said, I'm going to wear a tuxedo and you wear like some slinky dress. And she was cool enough to do it. And we had a double date. My roommate, John, and his girl went and we both dressed up and we had like little squirt guns, you know, for the guys <laughs> or whatever. You know what? It was stupid. Who cares? But it was fun. And it was something yeah. that, that we could talk about that we, I remember all these years later. And, and, and that's part of the appeal of, of an event kind of thing is something that's, okay, this day is special. We talked about months ago doing a zombie walk. They have zombie walks in like every major city one day a year or something like that. And I told my niece about it and I told my nephew who was four about it. And both of them are so excited about dressing up like zombies and seeing other people dressed up like zombies that it's just like, I don't care if it costs me a fudge and hundred dollars to go. I'm going to take them because this is something that they'll talk about forever because it's an event. It's something that doesn't happen every day. It's special. I love that. When I took my niece to Disneyland, she was dressed as Sleeping Beauty, or maybe it was Cinderella. I can't really tell the difference. And Blue or pink. The queen, the evil queen from Snow White told her, you know, the next time I see you, I want you dressed in purple. And my niece still talks about that. You know, it's like, (laughs) do they make 
you know, wicked queen costumes and all that stuff. Just the, <laughs> that she remembers that this character, when, when she was a little girl, she was five or something, this really was the wicked queen from the cartoon or whatever. And she still remembers that. And maybe now, at however old she is, 11, you know, she just rolled her eyes or whatever, because she knows that this is somebody who's paid to pretend to be that person. But that's a story that she'll be able to tell. Yeah. If it means to her what it meant to me. Love that kind of crap. The 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 childhood thing. That and not having my line end are like the two reasons I would want to have kids. So that you can dress them up? That you could show like a Snow kid White. the Empire Strikes Back or whatever and see the reaction when the revelation happens. Uh-huh. Now, don't show them the effing prequels first <laughs> because that ruins that. Don't show them the but, prequels at all. But it's just, you know, that kind of thing. To see something that I care about, that I love, or see wonder through their eyes is like a huge selling point for having kids. I don't, yeah, I don't know that, that they sell kids, but... That's all right. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. My friend has a kid. I think he's four now, but uh, he's really into Iron Man right now. And so for his birthday, which happened just like a month ago, they went out and they got him like the nice mask. Because I guess he has an Iron Man costume that he got for Halloween last year. And he still wears it all the time. He plays around in it all the time. So they finally got him the nice mask because the cheap, you know, flimsy one that they had with the costume is falling apart, I guess. And they got him the little things to put on his hands that like light up or whatever. Like he's got the repulsor. Can you make the arc sound, the the repulsor sound? Because it's such a distinctive, I can't even do it, sound. But it's so fun in Avengers every time you hear that. Because sometimes you don't even see it until you know the blast appears or whatever but you heard the i can't do it <laughs> but yeah he's he's got all these things now and he's all I, I wonder first of all how he became a fan of iron man does he there's an iron man cartoon isn't there there was a very short-lived like one season iron man there, there was a teen iron man cartoon called iron man adventures or something like that but i never met anybody who liked that huh. there but there was another one and you see like the dvd cover in stores and it's got modok and some other cool bad guy there maybe it's mandarin and i've always thought well, i, I kind of like to give that a, a, world. a view because i know very little about iron man so all of those stories would be new to me right and i wouldn't be like oh they changed the green goblin into fudge and hobgoblin why you know like i do with <laughs> something that i know back and forth i don't know i mean i would think the iron man movies themselves would are be, too adult yeah too way too adult for a three-year-old or a four-year-old and especially too adult for him to and go run around afterwards and be like, yeah, I'm Iron Man. Maybe he just loved the costume so much that he wanted to wear it all the time. I don't know. Well, what there it is. is that Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon that's in its second season now. So he could have seen it yeah, when he was three. He when he, that. You know, and it's a really, really good cartoon. Yeah. I was tending my nephew today and, and I had like three episodes in a row on while I was doing my work and I kept being tempted to go in there and watch it with him. <laughs> it had stuff for me, you know, it wasn't solely kid centric, you know, uh-huh. I haven't talked to him since Friday. So I don't know if he's going to take his kid to go see Avengers. The one that loves Iron Man, have him go dressed up in the mask and everything how, like those kids that came jumping across the rock. How young is your youngest? Not, not the boy. But the real kid. <laughs> My youngest is three months old. How young is she's eight? Would you take her to see it? I would. I don't think I, that it would be a problem for her. I took my niece to it yesterday, and, and the boy, he's four, he really, really wanted to go, and he's seen the commercials, and Hulk is in it, and all that. But I know him, and I, he just he wouldn't sit still for two and a half hour right. movie. But we have the second run theaters, and if in three months or whatever, he still wants to go. If I've only paid a buck or buck fifty right, or whatever, you have to get up and leave. It's no big deal. I'll give him the chance to to earn it. But he's not my kid, and so I don't know if I'm more strict because he's not my kid or less strict because he's not my kid. But I'll say something to him, and I'll stand by it. You know, I'll be like, "Hey, no, you acted up during Cars Two, so we're not going to go see whatever yeah. came out last. What was it? I don't know. There was some animated film that I was like, I you know, I saw with my niece, but I didn't see with him." Yeah, it's tough. I remember going with my kids to Finding Nemo. And at this point, I was a huge Pixar fan. Like when I saw Monsters Incorporated, it was a couple months in that I saw it. And then when Finding Nemo hit, I was just like, I am there opening day and I am excited. 
And my daughter, who was little at the time, she's like two or less, I don't remember, but she got all fussy and started tantruming and throwing a fit and crying. And I had to go out with her. And I was so upset that I had to go out with her because of that. And I was just like, dang it. And I I tried to stand like out of the theater, but still where I, I was off to the side and I could kind of see what was going on. But you're a good parent, too. Because how many times have you been in a movie where a kid just throws a fit or a kid is too little to be there? I went and saw that Rob Zombie Halloween <laughs> And there was a family that had brought their little kids, like four, five, six, seven years old, to this thing. And what the kid was saying, I don't like it, mommy. I don't like it. He said it in Spanish, but the, <laughs> they didn't get up and leave. It was just like they had no business taking a little kid to a movie like that. But, you know, they didn't want to pay for a babysitter. Yeah. I know I've, I've used that example before, but it's just so many people just don't give a crap. And yesterday in Avengers, there were kids running up and down the aisles that, you know, every time somebody started talking, they had to stretch their legs or whatever. And those kids shouldn't have been there. Yeah. And so I think the boy would enjoy the parts with the Hulk, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't Might know. be better just wait till it comes out on DVD for him to and see And it's it. going to happen in like five minutes, too. <laughs> I wonder what kind of an event this movie was. How big of an event is? It, is it an event like that where you, twenty years from now, when you have your your child as an adult, and he's like, "I'm going to film school, Dad," because I loved all those Marvel movies, and you can say, "You know, I saw Avengers opening day," <laughs> and there was little kids running around with Thor masks on and hammers in their hand, and like I do this with every movie ticket that I get. I save my movie tickets. I have them in a box. And I wound up being a film major, so I'm somebody who would think that is cool. But if my dad was able to be like, yeah, check this out. See this ticket here? Look, what does that say on that? That Deep throat. Dad. (laughs) Like, that's when I went to Star Wars. Sound of Music, you know, I saw that in the theater. My dad has told me stories. He worked in a movie theater growing up. You know, he's like, oh, so cool being the usher because when the last showing came, you know, I could just stand in the back and just watch all the movies and he tell you all sorts of movies that he saw. This doesn't belong in the episode. I, I, I told you this before, but I don't think I've told it on the air. My dad is this giant, giant fan of Westerns. He, he always has been. But I over in, where is it? Somewhere in Utah, Moab, Utah or something like that. Every summer they have this Western convention. Where like the few surviving <laughs> actors from the, the heyday of Western movies get together and they tell their stories and they're singing cowboys and they sign autographs and they show old movies and stuff. And he goes now that he's retired, he's gone every single year. And it's weird because it's in like August or something like that. And it's so similar to what I do every July <laughs> at Comic-Con that when he told me about it there was suddenly this connection with my dad that I didn't want him to see because he and I don't get along (laughs) that where I was just like, holy shit, we are the same. (laughs) And he was telling me, oh, I saw and fudge. I don't know their names. Saw Doug McClure and he was in any, you know, he knows the names of these movies or whatever. And the year they came out and I was like, who does that remind me of? Holy crap. And I shiver, you know, that kind of thing. (laughs) But that's the sort of thing where, you know, I was like, why didn't he, tell me about these things when I was a little boy that, oh, my dad, you know, when he got home from the war, we went and saw this together. Why didn't he tell me these stories? I have no stories about my grandfather or about, you know, my dad's childhood, except for, you know, we respected our elders when I was a boy. (laughs) We worked hard. or We walked uphill to this, you know, all that stuff. In the snow. Because to see that your parents were like you, and that they loved something or they were excited about something or they looked forward to something to a child, it humanizes them in a way that hearing about how hard life was in the 50s or whatever doesn't. But, you know, now that my dad's an old man, he's told me all these stories and stuff. And and I ask because maybe I have mellowed a little bit and he's mellowed as well or whatever. But now we see each other and I ask him about television and it's like, I remember the first time I saw a TV. And, and he tells the story and he's told it like three times. And I don't care because I want to hear it again. It's some kind of generational. It's some connection. He's not going to be around forever. He's an old man. Mm-hmm. 
to hear him talk about what it was like when his dad came home from the war. It's just like that blew me away. I didn't even know what my grandpa did in the war. You know what I mean? Because I didn't have a relationship with my father. I didn't have a dialogue with him. And my grandpa never talked about the war ever. And just to know that my grandfather brought home a sword and it has a swastika on the hilt that he got from a dead German. I was like, holy crap, can I, does that still exist? And he's like, <laughs> it's downstairs in the safe. And I was like, you're effing kidding me. You know, I've held that sword and it has a swastika on the fucking handle. That blows my <laughs> mind. And it's partly because of Indiana Jones and, uh-huh. and Steven Spielberg, you know, who's shown me World War II and Captain America and all that stuff. It's because of the movies of World War II. But still, it's just, I don't know. That's something that, if I, if I had a kid, I would want to tell him all these stories and show them the things that I loved. And, and maybe that's something that my dad tried and I was not receptive to it. Because one thing, he didn't want us to watch TV, but he, he would get these tapes of the old radio serials that he liked when he was a boy. The Lone Ranger or The Shadow or, or, you know, Abbott and Costello and all that stuff. And Abbott and Costello was the only one that I responded to. But now I think about it and it's like, The Lone Ranger is practically a superhero. Why didn't I like it? Why didn't I, you know, I, I kicked myself. Right. And now here you are making radio shows. Essentially, that's what we're as doing. As your hobby. It's so weird, the, the, the whole generational thing. And it's a give and take. You know, if your kid was like, eh, I don't want to see him binge. Daddy's fat and old. Then, okay, it hurts to, to have your kids say that to you. And maybe I said that kind of stuff with my old man and, and it created a gulf. Because I remember all the crap that he said when I was a teenager and stuff like that. And so, you know, it's just if I ever have a kid, I'll hopefully try and do it better. And that's that's the whole point of the next generation. That's the whole point of having children is you learn from your own mistakes. You learn from your parents' mistakes. Hopefully your kid won't make those. He'll make his own, but you know what I mean? It's just the, the knowledge passing on, you know, it's like hopefully generationally we're getting better instead of worse. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This has nothing to do with Avengers. I'm sorry. It's it's interesting stuff all the same. And kind of goes along with that whole thing that we were talking about, just the event of it. And, what somebody remembers and you know like we were talking about your father now saying yeah i remember i saw the man who shot liberty valance in the theaters look here's my ticket you know if my dad pulled (laughs) something like that out this is gone with the wind ticket although my dad would have been like two yeah but they re-released that that sucker every five or six years but uh you know if he's like this sleeping beauty i saw this the year it came out Right here. This is the ticket from it. Isn't that cool? You know, I would think that was amazing. I've been saving tickets for as long as my kids have been around. I can, when my kids grow up, I can say, look at this. See that? Fellowship of the Ring. (laughs) That's when I saw that in the theater. Look, here's Two Towers. Here's Return of the King. You know, I can pull these all out. And, you know, my son has still not seen those movies. I was just playing catch with him the other day. And he's like, hey, Dad, when can I see Lord of the Rings? You got to show them to him before Hobbit comes out. You will, right? Yeah, I will. I was saying to him and I was like, well, you know, we can see him uh, whenever you want. Maybe we can even convince Rish to bring us over the uh, extended versions versions, because I don't have those. And I actually haven't seen them. So that'll be interesting for me, too. Although... We'll have to set aside, you know, okay, set aside this whole day. Well, what you want to do <laughs> is the last time I watched it all the way through, we watched a disc a night because each disc is like 90 minutes. Uh-huh. And then the next night you watch the next one and all that. And that makes it bearable. Uh, they they did when Return of the King came out. They had a, a marathon kind mm-hmm. of thing. And my friend... They had one in Vegas and he drove to Vegas with his girlfriend and it started at like eight in the morning and they watched all of them in that. And I'm sure that's something that he will talk about forever, but it's exhausting. (laughs) Right. We saw that they were doing that with Avengers. They had screenings where for $40, you could see Iron Man and Iron Man 2 and Incredible Hulk and Thor and Captain America and then the Avengers. I don't, I wouldn't be able to stand that. It's, it's too much. I I don't, is it that I don't like those movies enough or is it that I'm old? It's probably a little bit of a, you know, that is an exhausting thing. Just sitting and watching just anything. If you sit and watch TV 
even if it's your favorite show the whole day, that takes a lot out of you, which it shouldn't because you're not doing anything, but it makes you tired. If it is an exhausting thing, what I was thinking of doing is like one movie a week. Like on Saturday, we watch one. Oh, that's the great. next week on Saturday, we watch the next one. Something like that. Well, you but- plan it out so that... It's three or four weeks before Hobbit comes out. So in case something happens and you miss a week, you can still do it. And and this is something we'll talk about in winter if we're still around. Is it better to see The Hobbit first, The Hobbit 1 and 2, and then The Lord of the Rings? Because my guess is no, that it's just like the Star Wars prequels. There's all sorts of references to what comes later just because of the way that movies are made. And, and, you know, I mean, it has Frodo in it and Ian Holm, I think, as as Bilbo. And the only reason you do that to bookend it is to make the connection with the movies you've already seen. I think that's something that's super cool that maybe someday that'll be an event. Like I'm actually taking my son to the Avengers. His birthday is this Thursday and I'm taking him out of school. And one of the things we're going to do that day is we're going to go and see the Avengers. He'll be able to talk about going to see it the week it came out. You know, when he grows up. With his old man. With his friends. Just and days before his old man kicked the bucket. That's right. The last thing that we did. He died on the way out of the theater. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, that's just something that I think is really interesting about big movies like this. And, you know, The Hunger Games was kind of like that, too. It was a big event. I think it surprised a lot of people that it was a big event. Was it a big event, though? I mean, I, I you didn't big. see anybody dressed as Katniss, did you? No, but it was the very first film, so you don't have a reference to dress as Katniss. Okay, I hear you. But you think for Catching Fire, there will be people dressed up like Elizabeth Banks was in that with the crazy hair and the, I mean, almost <laughs> kabuki. Possible. I don't, I don't know what you'd see. I mean, it all depends. You got to have merchandising coming out. You, I'm sure you'll see people with shirts. But it's just like the sports. You'll see people wearing jerseys uh, and all that. It's a way of pins. showing your loyalty, of showing how big a fan you are, right? Those dudes that go to a football game in January and they've got their shirts off and they're painted are showing everybody else, I love the Packers more than all the, right? right. So this is how dedicated I am. That's yeah, kind of an extension of that. The guys that are in the hospital for weeks afterwards because of the extensive frostbite that they received at the game. Yeah, those. I lost my nipple. That's how much I love the Vikings. <laughs> now, the Vikings, you don't have to worry because they play in a dome. So it's indoor. Although that that's not going to last. Their dome collapsed on them a couple of years ago. I don't know if you've ever seen the video, but it's cool because they got a video camera. Just like a surveillance camera. Oh, okay. That's always on. And then you just see all of a sudden just a crap load of snow comes falling through the roof because it just got too heavy and the dome is so old that it can't handle it anymore. It just broke right through. So they are building a new stadium or they're just fixing up the old one or they're actually leaving it ruthless? They're trying to build a new one. We'll have to see. I think they did something to repair the dome for the time being. I'm not sure what exactly is going on with that. I'm kind of confused. (laughs) Isn't it bizarre that this started out as a conversation about the (laughs) Avengers? That was one of the things my son, you know, he really wanted to go and see The Hunger Games. He he had a friend. Because he read the book? He hadn't read the books yet. He had a friend who said, hey, we're thinking about going like as a group and just going to see The Hunger Games. And my wife said, oh, you can't go see Hunger Games unless you've read the books. And he read all three books in like the space of two weeks. The boy did? He's a big reader. He really likes to read. So it doesn't surprise me. But well, yeah, that's cool, man. He just went to it. Again, anything that encourages a young person to read, that that's yeah. really awesome. That's yeah. Really and that's what a lot of these things are. You know, the Hunger Games. And you could say the Avengers is that too, because you read when you read a comic book, even though you do do lots of looking at pictures too, you're still reading and getting education out of it. Harry Potter, Hunger Games, a lot of these big blockbusters now flow out of books like that. You get a lot less of them that are born fully formed. Well, next spring with Ender's Game, I mean, hopefully there'll be an entire generation (laughs) reading that book. (laughs) I'm so stoked. All you'll see is the damn novelization cover or whatever and everybody but who cares well the covers were never that good anyway (laughs) so it won't be a loss but yeah my son just read ender's game for the first time and And did you tell him who was playing colonel graff no i haven't told him that but i was telling you know i looked on i was just going through facebook and they have those little ads over on the side and yeah they had an ad and it showed uh 
what's his face? The kid who's playing Ender. Do you know what his name is? Nope. Okay. The kid from Hugo shows his face there and next to it, it said, the enemy's gate is down. Oh. And I went, ooh, that gets me excited. See, that's cool. <laughs> we'll do an episode about that. Well, we probably won't, but <laughs> if there's still a podcast, we'll definitely talk about it. And there's so much competing for everybody's attention, every kid's attention, every adult's attention and that. That when there's something big enough. That it gets a lot of people's attention. That it's an event. And yeah, that's really cool. I mean, you don't make 200 million, 207 million in a weekend without it being an event. That's, that's something. And uh, we'll see how much it keeps going. Because the more it keeps going, the more an event and the more people are going to talk about it. People will talk about Dark Knight. Still. For a long time. Because that one just kept going and kept going and... But yeah, people will be talking about that and they'll be talking about Avatar for a long time. I assume people still talk about Titanic when it came out. It was released this year and I saw crap about it on talk shows and things like that where people are just like, oh, Titanic is back and it's so great. And now we can see it in 3D. So who gives a crap? (laughs) Oh, it's so neat that this event happened. And all I remember and there was... One of those things where they did a poll and they asked a bunch of kids, you know, people under 20, what is the biggest things that happened in the 90s? And yet Titanic was one of those things high on the list in the top 10 of the things that they remember from their childhood or whatever. Titanic and its massive appeal and how it just kept going for weeks and weeks and weeks. Well, we still talk about it because it was sort of unparalleled. I mean, Avatar was a huge deal, but it was no Titanic. I I was going to see real quick if I could adjust Titanic number five, Avatar 14. That makes a big difference in how big of an actual event they were. Inflation does change things. It's really interesting some of the things that you do see on that list when you adjust for inflation and like the Ten Commandments or the one that I thought was amazing is Exorcist is number nine. Yeah, that's horror movie. Just under a billion how could that be possible? I mean, uh, I don't know. And Dr. Zhivago, too. Like, really? Yeah, that was weird, an event? That's number eight? Nobody even talked about Dr. Zhivago during my childhood. Yeah. And, just and it strange. wasn't even that old. Uh, some of the things that seem like an event, you're not surprised. And then others, 101 Dalmatians, number 11 on the list. I would have never thought that of all the Disney movies that are going to be up there. 101 Dalmatians would, not, would have been what I thought was the number two Disney movie of all time. But uh, yeah, there you go. Jeez, we've talked a long time. That was me taking the ball. No, you did a good job. I I wouldn't have gone there. That's an interesting conversation. And for me, at least, that's really all that matters. Yeah. So, you know, this has been the Rish Outfield Show. (laughs) And I've been Big Anklevich tagging along. Good night. See ya. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. This show is lame. As lame as Rish Outfield? No, not that lame.